Well, hello there, and welcome back to the Marauder's Map. As you can probably tell from the title of this video, it's going to be a little bit more serious, and it'll be my one and only video on this game. Um, and the game in question is Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery. And this game that's currently out, Hogwarts Mystery, is developed by Portkey Games and Jam City, whereas Wizards Unite will be Portkey Games and Niantic. I have a checklist here that we need to go over because there's quite a few things that I don't really care for about the game. Sorry, I didn't really want to use the word hate because hate is a pretty strong word, but I very strongly dislike how this game is being handled. Um, and you'll see because of all these lovely reasons that I have in my note. The sun is quite bright, so that's why I'm a little squinty. Um, anyway, the first of which is the in-game currency or the coins and gems. And pretty much there's not enough ways to get coins or gems. The only real way to get coins or gems is by completing quests or tasks or whatever they're called um, within the storyline. And really you don't get that many. You might get one gem um, and you could get anywhere from 25 or 50 coins all the way up to a thousand to five thousand coins so it really just varies and then in addition to that when you go to purchase something in the shop which is what these coins and gems are used for the prices are absolutely outrageous like for for a robe it could be 3,000 gems or you know a, a, a hat is like 10,000 coins I, I don't really know the actual prices but that's just to illustrate how crazy the prices are in the store and it's really just for cosmetic changes um, and I think that we should have more ways of getting coins and gems within the game itself and the worst part about this in-game currency trend with in-app purchases and free-to-play games is that it's really targeting younger players who have their parents' credit cards on their accounts and they, they're impatient or they really want, you know, this scarf or something that makes their character different or seem better in-game. Um, and they just go ahead and purchase it right then and there and their parents don't like authorize the the payment or anything like that or maybe they have their own debit card or credit card or whatever and they are actually spending their own money on these things when they need to be saving it or spending it on other things like food or you know movie tickets with friends or whatever the next reason I don't really care for the game itself is that there's no competitive element to it the house points don't really matter as far as I know I'm almost done with year one so maybe they do something in year two or year three that just got released but the house points don't really do anything and we have this Facebook connectivity but we really can't see our friends progress or we can't duel our friends or do anything with that except for just recovering our account or logging into our account so I think that was a mistake on Jam City's part is that they should have added some sort of competitive element to the game to really keep people involved and engaged okay so now we're on to the two main reasons why I'm not covering the game or not really playing the game on my own um, the first one is the story itself. I love the story element, um, meaning not the lessons, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But the story is great. I just want to do the story by itself, but I can't because the lessons are what's holding me back. Because right now I'm in year one, chapter seven or eight, and I haven't done any of the lessons, but I've done all the story, but I wanna move on, but I can't move on unless I've done the lessons. And another thing that's really bothersome is that sometimes they have a, a sort of time wall, meaning that you can't do anything until you know four hours from now or you pay 50 gems or whatever it is and i think that's not really a smart decision by jam city because we already have this barrier of energy which uh, spoiler alert it's the other main reason why i don't play the game but now we have to wait four hours or spend money or in-game currency but we have to spend money to get the in-game currency so we have to spend gems to progress four hours and then we're not even able to complete the quest because we don't have enough energy it's just it's too much i think you should have one or the other if you don't want people to finish the game as soon as possible or you want them to spend money either have the energy or have the the time barrier and then another thing about the story is that there's no real exploration in Hogwarts and I know I'm only in year one but you can't really go to different buildings pretty much the only place you can go to besides your common room and the classrooms that you need to like potions and charms and things like that is the Great Hall and even there there's not a lot of exploration I just feel like 
it, it could have been much better done in, in a more first person perspective rather than this really wide third person perspective when you're in the Great Hall or in other buildings where you can actually explore and you know use a sort of joystick and um, you know sort of like a, a Fortnite but not in a shooter mobile game, but in a more role-playing style, like a RuneScape or something like that. And then the last thing about the storyline is that it's the same no matter which dialogue option you choose. So if you choose like option A, it'll eventually take you through the exact same dialogue as if you chose option B or option C. So it seems like there's not really much of a point of choosing different dialogues because you're going to be getting going to the same place anyway. I think Jam City would have been better off if they had like different storylines for different decision options. Like maybe option A would make you do this in your storyline first before something else, or option B would get you expelled and you have to start all over again from year one or something like that. It might make some people mad if you got expelled and you had to start everything all over again, but it would still add to the realisticness of the game, I suppose. I, I mean, it's not realistic to say that once you get expelled, you have a second chance, but I think that would be kind of cool to see sort of all right. Okay. I, I just really think that Jam City would have been better off if they had different routes for choosing, you know, different storylines depending on which option you choose. And then when you go down the line and you have another crossroads where you have to choose different options, then it spreads off even more. Um, and then eventually you can come full circle and have that overarching storyline and then sort of smaller storylines where you can choose the different order by choosing the different options. All right, and now to everyone's favorite thing about Hogwarts mystery, the energy. So this is something that almost everyone has a problem with when playing the game. A lot of it is because it takes so long to fill up because it takes four minutes to just get one energy. And I know there's other things that you can click on in the game to give you energy. But the problem with that is, is that if you have a full charge of energy and you click on those, it doesn't give you that energy still. So if you have 26 energy and it's completely full and you click on something that gives you an energy like a painting or, or a ghost or something like that, it won't give you 27. It'll only stay at 26. So you're pretty much wasting an energy and then you have to wait for that NPC to reload and get another energy, you know, hours from now. It, it just really feels like a pay to play game more than a free game because of the energy and you have to spend gems to refill energy or spend gems to pass that time barrier or just, you know, using energy for really unnecessary reasons. And there's really not much you can do without energy. You can't really explore the castle on its own or, or do anything like flying lessons or, you know, fly in a broom or do practice your spells. You really just have the lessons and the storyline and the lessons are purely energy based and the story has energy mixed in with other elements. And a lot of times the, the tasks it says, like if, if you're tapping on it and it says, you know, look over or read this or, you know, organize this or whatever, ask a question and it's a, it has like three energy. A lot of the times it doesn't even make any sense to do those things that it's asking you to do. So like sometimes it'll be like, oh, sit there or you know, that that's a really extreme example but sometimes it's just the most basic things that don't require that much energy and then it requires five energy to do it in the game so I think that there needs to be some sort of energy rebalance for everyone to be more willing to play the game. And there are games that do it right, like the sports games from EA, for example. So like Madden or FIFA, they do stamina right in the sense that you can do other things without stamina or there are different levels of stamina, not to the great extent that Hogwarts Mystery has because theirs, you can't even complete a quest or a task or a challenge on a full charge sometimes, or a lot of times really, and it takes hours to, to actually complete a chapter, sometimes even days if you're not actually paying for the game. So it's not really for the most patient people, but I feel like they need to cater it somehow to everyone and not just 
to those who are going to pay to play. And the example that pretty much everyone uses for the energy crisis is the devil snare scene, which is towards the beginning of the story. Um, and it requires so much energy that you can't even do it on one full charge. Either you have to you know, stay tangled and wait hours for your energy to fill up, or you can pay to fill up your energy with gems or you know get out of there with with enough gems or it it, it just seems so microtransaction based that it, it's not even fun it's just tapping and going until you're out of energy and then for those that don't pay for gems or for energy or anything like that then you're just waiting a lot and then you don't really want to play the game because you're doing so much waiting and it takes away from the realisticness of the game and you don't really feel like you're at Hogwarts anymore because you're just constantly waiting for the energy to pile up. I, I'm just not that patient enough to deal with the whole energy situation and I hope that Niantic doesn't have this issue that Jam City has with Wizards Unite um, and that they don't release something that seems like it's still in beta or that it's really buggy and has a lot of issues that they haven't really talked to their community about. Like, I feel like Fortnite is, again, a good example of community relations because they are constantly listening to the community and hearing out the problems and fixing it the next week. I think they're the, the top dog right now in community relations and actually listening to those consumers who are actually playing the game. So I just wanted to make this video and clarify why I'm not playing Hogwarts Mystery and why I'm just super excited for Wizards Unite now because now that Hogwarts Mystery is out, Wizards Unite news can start coming out and I think that that will soon be in the spotlight and people will start hyping that up because I think people were confused about Hogwarts Mystery and it being Wizards Unite so people were disappointed when Hogwarts Mystery came out and it wasn't Wizards Unite but they're two completely different games and I think that's why we haven't heard much about Wizards Unite is because they wanted to get as much hype and stuff for, into Hogwarts Mystery and then once that's died down a bit then they can bring up the hype for Wizards Unite because it's still Portkey Games and it's still Harry Potter so it's all the same thing but it's two different developers, two different games. But anyway, that was this week's video, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, you know, all that normal YouTube stuff. And since this was sort of a serious video, I decided to do this outside and show you the wonderful view from my house as a lovely time-lapse send-off. So, enjoy. Is this a good angle? Let's change it up a bit. Mischief? Manic.